until the closing ceremony of the Pyeongchang Games. Gangwon-do province's harsh cold weather was what kept the government in suspense. However, that freezing cold helped bring the entire world as well as South and North Korea together in harmony, making it possible for the Peace Olympics to succeed. There is a saying winter should be as cold as it has to be. Sufficiently cold winter weather helps keep pests and de uh, diseases from harming crops and produces a rich harvest of barley. Anthropologists say an ice age spurred the birth of humanity. In sharing each other's warmth, people began to sense a desperate need to band together. We rung in the new year after many changes. And I am deeply grateful to all Koreans and once again extend New Year's greetings. Fellow Korean citizens, last year Korea reached the 600 billion US dollar mark in exports for the first time in history. We ushered in an era of $30,000 per capita income. Korea became the sixth largest exporter and the seventh country to join the 3050 Club of Economic Powerhouses. With a population of over 50 million and per capita income exceeding $30,000. Our economic growth rate has continued to stay at the highest level among the advanced economies. At least in terms of the national economy, we have achieved tremendous development rising above colonial rule, war, poverty, and dictatorship. Despite the astounding growth of the national economy held by the world as a miracle, there are still many people who find life difficult. That is because the benefits of the economic growth that we accomplished together have been concentrated in the hands of a small number of the upper class and conglomerates not equitably distributed among all the people. Over the long haul, the percentage of corporate income in the GDP has steadily increased more than the economic growth rate, while that of household income has continued to decline. The trickle-down effect has long ago ended. Also, increasing exports stopped bringing about a rise in employment long ago. Korea has grown into one of the countries with the worst case of wealth polarization and economic inequity in the world. Economic inequity, also dubbed the 1 versus 99 percent society or a winner-take-all economy, is not a problem unique to us. It's a common challenge facing the entire world. All countries have finally came to understand that the fact uh, that sustainable growth is impossible without resolving this very problem. Consequently, such international organizations as the OECD and IMF, as well as major countries, are putting forth inclusive growth as a solution. The people-centered economy and innovative, inclusive nation being pursued by my administration are precisely in line with such thinking. Our goal is to create an economy in which all prosper together on the basis of a fair economy with a level playing field where innovative and income-driven growth enables sustainable development. It's all about creating a society where anyone can succeed regardless of their social economic status. Over the past year, this policy has enabled us to help increase real household income over the board and decrease living costs for such essentials as healthcare, education, and telecommunications. Moreover, the pursuit of innovative growth and a fair economy has led to many achievements. Nonetheless, jobs reports, more than anything else, have not lived up to quantifiable expectations. Self-employed business owners are complaining about difficulties. Conventional flagship manufacturing continues to falter. An improvement in the redistribution of income cannot be felt by the people. Evolving industrial structures and consumption behavior characterized by automation, unmanned systems and online shopping have transformed the job market, but we have not responded appropriately. Fear of the future has swelled and public confidence in the government's economic policy has declined. My administration is taking this e economic situation very seriously. 
However, I also want to emphasize that the hardships we are suffering now are even stronger proof of the need for the people-centered economy. An economic policy shift can be truly frightening. It will take time and may generate controversies. However, it is the path that we must take. We will achieve the goal of an innovative, inclusive nation by all means, while sufficiently making up for any shortcomings in the process. Fellow Korean citizens, this year's objective is to make the people clearly see signs in their own lives that the government's economic policy is heading in the right direction. To do that, tangible outcomes must be produced. This year will be a year when SMEs and conglomerates can grow together, micro-business owners and the self-employed can grow together with the people, and provincial regions can grow in on their specific strengths. What is needed to sustain growth is innovation. Nothing but innovation can make it possible to transform the fast follower model economy into a pace-setting economy and to create an economy that leads new markets by generating added value. Innovation will help revive existing industries and foster new industries that will become new growth engines. The government has selected strategic fields for innovative growth and forged an ecosystem for innovative startups. Last year, an all-time high of 3.4 trillion Korean won was invested in business ventures, and the number of newly established corporations exceeded 100,000, the largest ever. The penetration of electric and hydrogen vehicles has risen, laying the groundwork for future growth engines. Prior to 2017, Koreans were driving 25,000 electric cars in total, but in last year alone 32,000 new cars were added. The number of hydrogen cars has also soared to 889 from 177. The government is planning on increasing the number of electric and hydrogen cars to 430,000 and 67,000 respectively. Some 2,000 hydrogen buses will run on the roads. This will greatly help reduce the number of diesel cars and the level of fine dust. Beginning this year, inve uh, investments in strategic innovative industries will also be made in earnest. A total budget of 1.5 trillion won will be uh, provided for the three major fundamental fields of data, artificial intelligence, and the hydrogen economy. And an additional 3.6 trillion won in total will be injected into eight pace-setting projects for innovative growth, including smart factories, smart cities, self-driving cars, and drones. The government budget earmarked for uh, research and development surpassed 20 trillion won for the first time in history. Science and technology, ranging from original technologies to commercialized technologies, will be fused with innovation to produce added value. Innovation will be blended into such uh, traditional flagship manufacturing as the automobile, uh, shipbuilding, and petrochemical industries as well. And the innovative strategy for manufacturing unveiled last year will be going into full gear. The number of smart factories was only about 300 by 2014, but it will be drastically raised to 30,000 by 2022, including this year's 4,000. The number of smart industrial complexes will also be gradually increased from the two this year up to 10 in total by 2022. Deregulation is a must when it comes to increasing corporate investment and identifying new industries and services. An amendment to the Special Act on Internet-only banks has made it easier for IT businesses to set up a virtual bank. And the enactment of a Special Act on Financial Innovation Support will serve as a foundation for developing various innovative financial services. And the implementation of a Korean regulatory sandbag, uh, sandbag box system will uh, enable the speedy verification of marketability for new technologies and products and also facilitate their launch. Pan-government support will be rendered to ensure that large-scale businesses invest pro in projects that can carry out as early as possible.
Only when growth is facilitated in local areas can the national economy be revitalized. For regionals and for regions enduring economic hardships due to the restructuring of their key industries, for instance, my administration will advance 14 projects to boost their vitality. The public infrastructure projects that are essential for balanced national uh, development will be exempted from pre preliminary feasibility uh, studies and uh, total of 8.6 a trillion won will be invested into building infrastructure that is uh, closely linked to everyday neighborhood activities such as libraries and gyms, uh, thereby swiftly improving living conditions in areas. In addition, 170 old city centers will be reborn through an urban regeneration new deal. Living conditions in farming and fishing communities will be significantly improved through smart farms and New Deal projects. My fellow Korean citizens, the foreign exchange crisis of 1997 has left deep scars on our society. That economic crisis that unexpectedly swooped down upon us without any social safety net in place caused anxiety among our population. Against this backdrop, all Koreans joined forces, overcame the crisis, and achieved economic growth again, but failed to halt the deepening job instability and widening social economic divides. Sustainable growth is possible only when all prosper together, and this is not just simple rhetoric. We have all experienced it time and again with economic growth rates decreasing under every single administration over the past two decades. To expand exports and domestic demand, the two main wheels of the economy and inclusive growth aimed at jointly sharing their benefits is indispensable. Koreans are entitled to the happiness befitting the era of annual per capita income of 30,000. This is what an inclusive society is all about. First, my administration will further strengthen the social safety net and employment safety net. Focus will be placed simultaneously on increasing job opportunities and improving the quality of jobs. Jobs are the very starting point of people's lives. The government will strive to ensure that the social safety net runs in conjunction with the employment safety net. This year, the Earned Income Tax Credit, an incentive for low-income working families, has more than tripled, and the number of people eligible for the incentive has more than doubled. As a result, a total of 4.9 trillion won will be dispersed to 3.34 million households. My administration will also build a Korean unemployment assistance system to provide support for living ex expenses during job searches or re-employment programs. As the number of permanent employees increased last year, the number of employment insurance subscribers soared by 470,000. It is a truly welcome news. And in the days to come, employment insurance will also be expanded to cover self-employed contract workers, artists, and those who have been left in, uh, behind in employment uh, insurance. As part of the efforts to ease the harsher facing society's vulnerable, uh, the monthly pen basic pension and the pension for those for disabled were also increased, as well as the monthly child benefits. Last year, we saw a groundbreaking expansion of health insurance coverage, and a lot of people are already feeling the actual effects. This year, a renal ultrasonography and the MRI of the head and abdominal area will be covered by health insurance. Coverage for dental care and traditional Korean medicine will also be expanded. My administration will strive to ease anxiety and ensure that health insurance alone suffices when receiving medical treatment. Burdens on the shoulders of families with relatives suffering from dementia were also halved last year. This year, the number of nursing homes will be increased, and three years later in 2022, the government plans to make sure that one out of every four senior citizens is eligible for medical service house calls. Second, bolder investments will be made in children. 
Starting this new year, the monthly child benefit will be disbursed to every family with a young child. The limit on the age of the ch children targeted will also be raised to five to, uh, from five to six. Nationally and locally funded kindergartens are being expanded faster than planned. Last year, an additional 500 classes opened, which surpassed the target number. This year, a total of 1,080 new classes, which is about twice of that last year's expansion, was added. In 2017, a total of 393 nationally and lo locally sponsored daycare centers were established, and during last year, 574 new cares uh, were set up. This year, 685 daycare centers will be added, including those at workplaces. Starting from September this year, it will, be, uh, it will become mandatory to establish a daycare center at an apartment complex with more than 500 households. The government initially pledged to ensure that four out of every 10 children will be able to attend nationally and locally funded daycare centers uh, and kindergartens by 2020, but this plan uh, will happen a year earlier. The transparency of private kindergartens has to be increased as well. I ask the National Assembly to pass the three kindergarten-related bills at the earliest date possible. The number of children to be covered by extended after-school daycare programs will be markedly, markedly uh, increased to 530,000 by 2020 from 360,000 last year. Eight out of every 10 elementary school students from double-income households will be able to use state-assisted daycare centers. Third, we will deal with safety issues as an overriding national task. As part of the efforts to prevent deaths from industrial accidents, the government will put into practice relevant countermeasure, countermeasures with a sense of responsibility and determination. Not a single life was lost from construction crane accident last year thanks to preventive measures. My administration will have the number of deaths from industrial accidents by 2020. We will also make concerted efforts to ensure that the recently passed National Assembly Act to prevent the outsourcing of hazardous jobs is enforced as intended. Last year, we saw remarkable achievements in preventing the spread of Middle East respiratory syndrome and infectious disease in livestock. Taken with the case of effective accident prevention in regard to construction cranes, this serves as a reminder of the fact that our endeavors, uh, combined with keen awareness, can uh, bring achievements. At the end of last year, however, the people were unnerved by the series of accidents that were closely related to our lives, including the derailment of KTX train, a fire at KT building, a rupture of hot water pipeline, and deadly accident in a pension in Gangneung. All these accidents came together to alert the government, and we have still uh, many areas to uh, look into. Fourth, national competitiveness will be measured by how many skilled innovators we nurture. Before the end of my term in office, we will foster 45,000 master's and PhD degree holders in peace in pace setting innovative gro uh, growth areas, as well as 40,000 skilled innovators in science and technology. A new uh, university majors specializing in artificial intelligence will be established, and relevant assistance will be provided to promote the growth of top-notch software engineers through an academy uh, for innovation. Vocational training for those areas related to new uh, technology will be greatly expanded. The government will strive to provide the most needed vocational training at every stage, attending school, seeking employment, working for a company, and re-entering the job market. Concerning the plan for implementing social policies for an inclusive nation that guarantee daycare, uh, education, work, leisure, life after retirement, and other basic living requirements, I will make a report separately as early as possible. Fifth, I will make it clear that small business owners, the self-employed, and farmers are the basis of the national economy. Traditional markets and small businesses and neighborhoods will be protected and assisted so that they can thrive. Countermeasures will be enhanced to help small business owners and self-employed suffering from minimum wage hikes. The farm gate price of rice during last year's harvest rose sharply for the first time in years to 193,000 won per 80 kilo uh, kilogram sack. This may help uh, raise the income of farming households. This year, focus will be placed on reforming the rice subsidy 
the system designed to promote the public good and the smart uh, agriculture administration policy. The fishery subsidy will be raised by 50,000 won this year, raising the total that fishery households can receive 650,000 won. Subsidized ve uh, vehicle fares for ferry transport will be significantly expanded for residents living on islands, and government will subsidize the transportation of necessities beginning in June next year. Sixth, I will make sure that each and every one of the people can take pride in our culture and enjoy related achievements. People around the world are enthralled with Hallyu, such as the K-pop boy, uh, boy band BTS and Korean dr TV dramas. This pr uh, proves our culture's potential. I will help create an environment in which everyone competes fairly and creators are treated reasonably so that a second BTS and a third Hallyu can emerge. This year, 1 trillion won will be invested to build culture-related infrastructure for daily life. Subsidies for low-income households will be raised so that they can use a special debit card to pay for diverse cultural activities. A total of 30 sports facilities for people with disabilities will be built. Another subsidized debit card will be given to low-income individuals with disabilities. Regardless of whether the policy scope or related budget is large or small, I will help build the foundation for an inclusive nation. Fellow Koreans, an equitable and just society is calling is a calling that my administration, which was brought in by the candlelight demonstrations, cannot forget even for a moment. As soon as it was launched, my administration set out forcefully eradicating deep-rooted evil uh, perpetuated by those in authority. Each ministry and agency, including prosecutors, the police, the National Intelligence Service, and the National Ta Tax Service, started self-driven reforms, voluntarily uncovering past wrongdoings and correcting them. There is not even one case to date of these law enforcement institutions greatly disappointing the people as they had in the past. My administration will never tolerate regressing back to the errors of the past, having learned a lesson from what happened with the previous administration. Now, my administration will ceaselessly continue to eradicate deep-rooted evil in every, everyday life so that ordinary people do not have to experience the frustration caused by a wall of injustice. I will help swiftly push reforms that root out deceit and illegalities such as embezzlement by kindergarten owners, recruitment-related irregularities, the culture of abusing one's power and tax evasion. I will fight unfairness without compromise until the people can sense a transformation in our society. I now intend to conclude the reform of law enforcement institutions through legislation. I ask for the National Assembly's cooperation with passing related bills so that the reforms are not just dependent on the good faith of an administration. These bills are related to National Intelligence Service Act. Last, at the last meeting of the Standing State Affairs Consultative Body comprising the ruling and opposition parties and the government, the participants agreed to rec rectify unfairness and create the institutional framework for a fair economy and promised to make endeavors to amend related laws, including the Commercial Act. Fellow Koreans, in the past year, the people opened up a path toward peace. We have become a main player on issues regarding the Korean Peninsula. We have overcome power politics and taken the lead in forging our own destiny. We have experienced and confirmed before our eyes that our efforts can bring us peace. The path toward peace on the Korean Peninsula still continues to expand even at this very moment, and it will speed up even more this year. It was very comforting to hear that the remains of 13 soldiers killed during the Korean War were found during the operation to remove for landmines on Arrowhead Hill. Along with the remains, we could regain the spirit of reconciliation that has laid buried in our battlegrounds. When we initiate an operation to locate other remains in April, we will be able to fulfill the duty of the nation by excavating many more of the fallen.
The second North Korea-U.S. summit that will take place soon and a reciprocal visit to Seoul by Chairman Kim Jong-un of North Korea will be other turning points that will firmly solidify peace on the Korean Peninsula. We will not loosen our, loosen our guard until the promise to denuclearize the peninsula is kept and peace is fully institutionalized. Peace can drive economic growth. The desire to prosper lies in the people of both South and North Korea. The connection of railroads and roads between the two Koreas will help find new breakthroughs for our economy. The Kaesong Industrial Complex and tourism in Kumgangsan Mountain were beneficial to both South and North Korea. We welcome North Korea's intention to resume their operation without conditions or compensation. As such, the prerequisites for the two Koreas resuming operation of the complex and Kumgangsan tourism have essentially been met already. My administration will cooperate with the international community, inclu including the uh, United States, to resolve the remaining issues such as international sanctions as soon as possible. Peace on the Korean Peninsula expand, is expanding northward and southward. We will move forward to create economic and security communities in Northeast Asia through the new northern policy. Through the new southern policy, we will di diversify our trading destinations and create a people-centered community of peace and prosperity with countries in those regions. This year marks the 100th anniversary of the March 1st independence movement and the establishment of the provisional government of the Republic of Korea. In the past century, we have built an independent democratic republic based on public sovereignty, popular sovereignty by breaking free of colonial rule and dictatorship. We are now dreaming of building a peaceful, prosperous and powerful country and overcoming division. We are now passing the last crucial moment of realizing our dream. Before long, permanent peace on the Korean Peninsula and an innovative, inclusive nation where everyone prospers will arrive before us. Kim Gu, one of our independence leaders, said in his 1947 statement titled My Wish, the only thing I desire to have wholeheartedly is the power of sophisticated culture. The power of culture makes ourselves happy and, moreover, brings happiness to others. The next century of the Republic of Korea demands a new spirit and new culture from us. As we safeguarded democracy through the most peaceful means by holding candlelight protests and brought each other happiness with the utmost, with the utmost maturity, I hope that a culture of shared prosperity will blossom through concessions, compromises and agreements. We have come so far without losing sight of our common goal. We have achieved much in the cold. We will accomplish it all, peace, innovative growth, and an inclusive nation as well. Thank you. Well, we've just been watching President Moon Jae-in deliver his New Year's speech at the Blue House. As expected, a sizable chunk of it went to the issues facing the economy, uh, efforts to tackle corruption here in South Korea, and of course his diplomatic uh, drive with North Korea. Even BTS got a shout out from the president. Now, uh, he, he is going to be heading to a different part of the Blue House where he's going to hold a press conference with members of the Korean and international media. Uh, we'll be bringing uh, you that when it starts. It will take him several minutes uh, to get there. So in the meantime, let's take a look at some of the day's news while we wait. Uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and Chinese President Xi Jinping have agreed on the need to resolve issues on the Korean Peninsula in a diplomatic manner. According to China Central TV on Thursday, the two leaders exchanged views on their bilateral relations and the situation on the peninsula during their Beijing summit 
on Tuesday. Kim also reiterated his commitment to denuclearize North Korea. He also said he will make efforts to obtain a successful outcome at his second meeting with US President Trump. And President Xi, while supporting a second Kim Trump summit, said Beijing will play a constructive role in achieving the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. China has pledged to purchase a substantial amount of agricultural, energy and manufactured goods and services from the United States after trade talks between the two in Beijing this week. A statement by the U.S. Trade Representative's Office on Wednesday said the two countries discussed ways to achieve uh, fairness uh, in terms of two-way trade and balance in trade relations, uh, also covering issues related to intellectual uh, property, IP protection. It also said Washington and Beijing have discussed the need for the agreement to provide for complete implementation subject to ongoing verification and effective enforcement. The two sides have been holding meetings since US President Donald Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping agreed on a 90-day trade war truce last uh, month. Last year, the South Korean government ordered a Japanese firm to provide compensation to Koreans forced to labor for little or no pay at a company, uh, at the, the same company during World War II. And on Wednesday, an order took effect freezing that company's career based assets. Following the court's ruling, the Japanese government has proposed launching bilateral talks to try and settle this thorny issue. Parky June reports. The local assets of Nippon Steel and Sumitomo Metal Corporation were officially frozen on Wednesday after legal notification from the court was delivered to PNR, Nippon's joint venture with South Korean steelmaker POSCO. The notice was sent by the Taegu District Court after the Japanese steelmaker refused to respond to the Supreme Court's order to compensate Korean victims of wartime forced labor. The assets in question are 81,000 shares of PNR worth around 357,000 U.S. dollars. According to the Supreme Court's ruling, the company owes the four plaintiffs in the case about $87,000 each. After the notice was sent, Tokyo formally requested negotiations with Seoul. According to Japan's Kyoto News Agency, Japan's Vice Foreign Minister Takeo Akiba summoned South Korea's Ambassador Lee Soo-hoon to protest against the decision. He also called for two-way talks based on the 1965 bilateral agreements that normalized ties between the two countries. It would be the first time the two sides have held talks under the treaty about property claims. But if negotiations don't work out, the treaty calls for an arbitration committee that involves a third country. And if that's not enough, Japanese broadcaster NHK says the Japanese government could even consider taking the issue to the International Court of Justice. Seoul's foreign ministry said unnecessary conflicts do not help resolve the issue, but it added that it will closely review Tokyo's request. Park Hee-jun, Arirang News. Now, a taxi burst into flames in central Seoul on Wednesday evening after the driver's apparent self-immolation attempt in protest against a ride-sharing service introduced by the country's largest mobile messenger company, Kakao. The 64-year-old driver, who's currently suffering from second-degree burns to most of his body, is unconscious and still being treated at an intensive care unit at a nearby hospital. Before the fire, the taxi driver in question is now known to have told a colleague that he sees no hope in the future. Kakao Mobility Corporation introduced a limited version of the car pooling service late last month, but it has delayed the formal launch due to massive protests from taxi drivers. Now, we are awaiting the press conference with uh, President Moon Jae-in. We've just seen him give a speech for the past 20 minutes or so. He has moved over to the uh, Yong Bing Guan uh, to take questions. He's just introducing himself to members of the press. So let's turn it over to our translators now and listen in. And today I will pick the members of the press who will ask uh, questions. And in order to do so, I will uh, carry out the session and I will host uh, the com news conference. I think we will be here about for the next 80 minutes and we will cover areas of uh, foreign affairs, domestic economy, 
And this year, uh, this time also, uh, we will focus on uh, foreign affairs, especially because we had the recent uh, visit to China by North Korean Chairman Kim Jong Un. And second, we will cover the domestic economy. And lastly, we will cover uh, politics, social, and culture areas. And the time allocated for three sections will be 30, 30 minutes, and the 20 minutes for the very last section. And I, because I do not know every one of your names, I, uh, I'm afraid that uh, the questions will be focused and concentrated in some of the media, but uh, we will have our uh, deputy spokesperson, uh, Ko min Jung, who will be helping us to reorganize uh, the structure. The first, the person will, uh, will, who will be having the first question, I actually have a person, one person in mind, who is uh, the, uh, the secretary of the members of the press corps. So it will be Lee sang from Yonhap News Agency. And uh, the next questions will uh, be just randomly uh, selected. So please raise your hands and or if you can express uh, your willingness to ask questions. So. Everyone, anyone could be picked. I am Lee sang from Yonhap News Agency. I am very privileged to ask you the first very question. This year, I would like to help uh, to um, wish a new, great New Year's for you. And all of the people are suffering. Uh, but I wish that uh, they could have hope. Uh, Inter-Korean relations, denuclearization, and economy, I believe that uh, these questions will be asked by many of the journalists who are here. My question is very broad. Today marks uh, the 20 months of you taking an office, and from the 60 uh, months of your term, it, uh, we have passed one-third uh, of your term. So through the past 20 months, what do you handpick as the most biggest achievements and what is the biggest difficulties that you have and um, how you would like to overcome uh, the areas that you would like to uh, improve in the, uh, in the near future? Well, the past 20 months has uh, been very important for my administration, who uh, was given birth uh, thanks to the candlelight uh, movement. And we showed in uh, Devers and we exerted our full efforts to live up to these expectations of the public. And I believe that every one of us did uh, also. So in this area, I believe that we have made great achievements. We have made a nation noteworthy of being called a nation, and we have made uh, achievements to make a just and fair society. And uh, also, we have made uh, great uh, progresses, uh, in including a change in our economic paradigm. And also, we have uh, ended uh, the framework of confrontation and hostility of uh, on the uh, Korean Peninsula. So these are some achievements that I would like to highlight. And the biggest uh, difficulties, I believe, must be the job reports, that they did not live up to the expectation of the public. So this was something that uh, hurt me the most. And how I would resolve this issue is uh, the new task and the biggest task, in fact, for my administration. So uh, the, I don't think that we had a wrong uh, basics uh, for the policies. We will keep on with our policies, but we will supplement what we need to and sufficiently uh, in the going future. And we will focus on the job reports, the indexes, so that we make differences in uh, this year compared to the last. So we will make an a uh, where the uh, quantity and the quality of jobs can be increased. <laughs> Let's start from the person at the center. 
Thank you. I'm MB, uh, from Choi Jung Nak from MBN. I wish you a happy new year, and I hope that uh, you uh, this uh, year would bring more prosperous uh, Korean Peninsula. As you said, uh, Chairman Kim Jong Un visited China. What is your take on this? And uh, the end of war uh, statement that was scheduled last year, and the reciprocal visit by Chairman Kim was not realized last year. So uh, in your opinion, uh, the reciprocal visit of uh, Chairman Kim, the peace treaty, and uh, what is going to happen in this regard this, uh, this year is my question. Chairman Kim Jong-un's uh, visit to China, to put it short, is, uh, a, is a signal that the second uh, North Korea and U.S. summit is, uh, is going to happen in the near future. And China uh, took the stance on the denuclearization of North Korea and the peace regime on the Korean Peninsula, they took a great role in uh, this regard, and uh, China is still playing a uh, significant role. So Chairman Kim's visit to China will uh, be a positive uh, influence on the second North Korea-U.S. summit. And by this point, uh, it would be in the very near future, the second North Korea-U.S. summit uh, will be in preparation. Uh, the walking, the, the uh, working level talks will uh, resume soon. Chairman Kim Jong-un's reciprocal visit to Seoul uh, is a significant event because it is the first of its kind uh, of a leader of North Korea visiting South Korea, and this will be a groundbreaking event when it happens. This was a promise that uh, Chairman Kim made himself and announced, and therefore it will be realized. However, the second uh, North Korea and U.S. summit, uh, we have to think about this in relation to the uh, summit between the two countries. So I believe it will be the uh, North Korea-U.S. summit uh, taking place first, and then the reciprocal visit to Seoul will take place. North Korea has a different uh, regime structure uh, from us. And uh, it is the first event of their leader to uh, visit South Korea. So th there should be a lot of things that they have to be, they uh, should be pondering over, and uh, they should be prudent about this. Therefore, uh, we did not. Uh, ask them uh, or push them to uh, this, for this to happen, and we will not do so, but in the near future, the two of us will uh, sit down together and will share the outcomes of the second North Korea-U.S. summit, and there is a, a definite need for this. The peace regime and the end of war declaration that you mentioned, uh, these were discussed and agreed uh, uh, during the Singapore summit, and the reciprocal uh, measures of North Korea was a prerequisite. And to this date, there were some uh, dis uh, discrepancies between the two countries, uh, what should happen first. So during this summit, all these issues would be resolved.
네, 대통령님 반갑습니다. 저 뉴스핌 yeah, 최성무 기자입니다. Thank you very much. I'm Choi Song Woo from Newspim. As you just mentioned, the second North US summit, the core and the essence of it, I think it all comes down to the international sanctions. In order to alleviate any problems in according to this, you said that you would uh, closely cooperate with the international uh, society. What are the orders, do you think, should uh, follow in between uh, the US and North Korea? And and also, do you have any plans to mediate between these two countries? Well, it all comes down to uh, when, it, when we speak of uh, the in international sanctions against North Korea, it all comes down to the speed of uh, denuclearization. And in order to enable swift um, easing of the sanctions, uh, North Korea, I believe that it needs to come up with some drastic measures for, uh, for uh, uh, denuclearization. And the continued uh, the measures to facilitate and to encourage uh, North Korea to denuclearize, I believe we need to think of such additional measures as well. And I believe that this is uh, the essence of the second uh, North U.S. summit. I believe it will be the most important agenda item. And the first North U.S. summit was more uh, regarding an, an, an abstract uh, agreement. I believe that the second round of talks will uh, based on the ref and reflecting on this uh, these first uh, summit, and they would uh, come up with more clear and specific agreements. That is what uh, my expectations are. Let's take one yeah, reporter from this side. The person in the front row. Well, I wish you a happy new year, Mr. President. I am very glad to see you once again. I'm uh, Anne from JTBC. My question is related to this topic. North Korea and the U.S., uh, it, I think it all comes down to uh, their expectation level and uh, how can they uh, come to a conclusion. Uh, and this will be the uh, sticking point and it will be a crucial point for the, for the second uh, summit. Uh, or denuclearization in the Yongbyon facility or dismantling of the nuclear weapons that are already made uh, should take place and then U.S. would uh, take uh, corresponding measures uh, alleviating sanctions. So this type of package deal could be possible. So this year you will have a lot of opportunities to meet uh, Chairman Kim or uh, President Trump. So do you have, do you, are you willing to uh, mediate the the talks between the two countries. I think you just suggested all the good plans, uh, so uh, that will be the, pr uh, the direction that I will take in mediating the two countries. Do you have anything to add? Maybe more ideas? Okay, anything additional? Well, I think uh, the critical point is to what level uh, do these two countries uh, make concessions and how they can come to a compromise. I understand that uh, the, our government had made a lot of uh, efforts in this regard last year. So do you have any uh, good plans to really uh, persuade them directly. Of course, you would not be able to disclose it to the fullest, but uh, could you just give us a hint of any plans? I believe the two sides know already. North Korea, they uh, know that uh, for the international sanctions to uh, be lifted, they have to uh, do more on the denuclearization. And from the U.S. side, uh, they need to come up with uh, countermeasures uh, that befits the, uh, U, uh, the North Korea's endeavors. However, the... Um, Distrust between the two countries for the the last uh, several decades remain, and this is the discrepancy that has been created between the two countries. 
And I believe this is also why uh, the postponement of the uh, originally planned talks and uh, meetings uh, happened. So the uh, touching point of these two countries and their stance uh, will be made. And I think it is coming to uh, our sites, actually. So that is why we are uh, expecting the summit to take place in the near future. So I think we could take a positive stance on in this regard. Let's go to the foreign press. President Moon, good morning. Happy New Year. Please excuse me for asking your question in English. Um, when you met Kim Jong-un last year, did you have the chance to ask him how he would define the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and what obligation that might put on U.S. forces and U.S. strategic assets in the region? Thank you. 대통령님 저는 사이먼 데니어 워싱턴 포스트 지국장입니다. 먼저 새해 복 많이 받으시고 또 제가 영어로 질문 드리는 점 양해해 주시기 바랍니다. 작년에 대통령님께서 우리 김정은 위원장을 만나셨을 때 혹시 김정은 위원장이 한반도의 비핵화를 어떻게 정의하고 있는지 질의하실 그럴 기회가 있었는지 궁금합니다. 또한 김정은은 그렇다면 한반도의 비핵화가 이루어질 경우에 주한 미군이라든지 주한 미군이 보유하고 있는 전략 자산은 또 어떻게 되는 것인지에 대해서도 질의하실 기회가 있었는지 궁금합니다. 아 예, 에, 지금. In the U.S. right now, because it had a long uh, period of distrust and hostility uh, against North Korea, and for numerous uh, times uh, they have reached, uh, the two sides have re tried to reach an agreement, but uh, this process has uh, been fractured along the period of time. Therefore, they have a very strong distrust on uh, North Korea, and I'm very fully aware of this. So when uh, Chairman Kim Jong-un talks about denuclearization for the U.S., the CBID that uh, they are talking about on their hand would be probably different from what Kim Jong-un will be talking about. So uh, therefore, this this is the basic belief that the uh, Americans have. Well, uh, Chairman Kim, for me, to me, or to President Trump, or to President Xi Jinping of China, and to uh, President Putin of Russia, uh, Chairman Kim, those are the leaders that Chairman Kim have met in person, have made clear that uh, the denuclearization that is the complete denuclearization that is demanded by the international community has no difference in what he has in his mind. He has been very clear about this. And together with this, in the U.S., the end of uh, the war treaty uh, that is demanded by North Korea it was not so welcomed because in order to have this, we need to dissolve the UN uh, C or we need to withdraw the uh, USFK forces. So I think the, there were these uh, distrust factors. However, Chairman Kim, when it comes to denuclearization and the end of the war treaty, as well, and he thinks that these are separate from the U.S. forces in Korea. So the USFK is not linked with the denuclearization process of the Korean Peninsula. So as two sovereign nations, the U.S. and South Korea have an alliance, and this is why the USFK is residing here in Korea. So this will not affect the, uh, the agreement or future dialogue between uh, the two Koreas or the North and the U.S. talks. And also, 
uh, whether to keep the USFK uh, res residing in Korea lies in the hands of Washington and Seoul. So Chairman Kim Jong-un has this acknowledgement. More questions from the foreign press? Uh, I'm Mafei from People's Daily. Thank you for having me. Uh, in the past year, um, with the great efforts of Mr. President, a series of positive changes have taken place on the uh, Korean Peninsula. China always supports the improvement of inter-Korean relations and welcomes the positive moves on the peninsula. So my question is, how would Mr. President evaluate China's role in, in promoting the uh, peaceful settlement of the Korean Peninsula issue. Thank you. Hello,我是马飞，一名日报记者张英。去年，我们文在寅大统领께서，기울여주신노력덕분에，한반도에는여러가지긍정적인변화들이있었습니다。啊，그리고또한，저희中国은，哦，南北关系개선，이런노력들
The process of denuclearization uh, this time is different from what had happened in the past. So we have a different approach. In the past, it was more about uh, high-level talks on the uh, working-level talks on the uh, deputy vice ministers, but this time it's involving the two leaders of the states, and it had been. Um, uh, released to the international society, so I believe that uh, we have different weight. And in the past, we uh, pushed for the report by North Korea to uh, be first, and there were many controversies along uh, the uh, credibility of North Korea's reporting of its um, nukes and its facilities. But this time, it was all about uh, for North Korea to halt its missile launch. Uh, Launches, and second, to uh, to dismantle its nuclear facilities, and set third, also to dismantle its um, nuclear launch uh, pads, and also it has mentioned the disclosing uh, the closing of the Yongbyon nuclear facilities. It has the all of these have been mentioned, and North Korea also pledged to have international um, monitoring inspections uh, inspectors to uh, be in. in a regime. So these very uh, concrete measures, these actions, or the, uh, the ICBM or IRBM, or those missiles dis dismantlements, or the uh, dismantlement of the assembly line of uh, these missiles, and moving forward to uh, the dismantling of the nuclear facilities. I believe when the uh, US gives uh, corresponding measures, I believe that we can have more uh, trust between the two states, and I believe that we can make make new, uh, better uh, achievements and process. And in this process, uh, what uh, North Korea takes uh, measures and the corresponding measures by the US, they need to sit down physically, and this will happen in the second North US summit. And I have mentioned about the USFK and uh, the, the assets, nuclear assets that the US has uh, dispatched in Guam or Japan. They, these are not only related to North Korea, but it's an issue uh, corresponding to the peace and stability of the Northeast Asia as a whole. So when there are talk progresses made between Washington and North Korea, I don't think that these uh, other uh, issues will be related to the uh, U.S.-North Korea talks. And the person in the back... On the second row. Hello, I am Kim ji from KBS. Chairman Kim uh, said that uh, he, he sent a letter that uh, we should meet frequently this year, and it was regrettable that he couldn't make the reciprocal visit. So what was your message back to him? And he also mentioned multi-party uh, agreement in his New Year's speech. So the end of uh, war declaration and the peace treaty, who are the signatories that will sit down to discuss this matter. The inter-Korean relations and the uh, letters uh, that are exchanged, uh, it happens uh, ad hoc when it is necessary. But other than a case uh, where a special envoy uh, delivers it uh, himself or herself, uh, it is not made public about the letter from the two leaders. Uh, so this was the practice in the past, but this time the letter that I received last month, I thought it was more special. Uh, first and foremost, it was uh, very sincere. 
and uh, his regret and his uh, asking for understanding that he could make the reciprocal visit during 2018 and looking forward to another one in 2019. So these contents uh, were very sincere and I uh, thought that it should be uh, made public to our people because I know that there's a sentiment that the people uh, thought it was regretful that Chairman Kip could not come to Seoul as he uh, promised. So we uh, decided on the uh, extent of uh, the disclosure of the letter, but I, I ask for your understanding that we could not disclose the full letter. Uh, letter. I did also write back with the utmost sincerity. I could not uh, reveal the details. I hope you understand. So based on these activities uh, in the new year 2019, uh, we will meet more frequently and the inter-Korean relations and also denuclearization. Uh, in regards of denuclearization, uh, everything will be uh, more happening more speedily. So I think we mostly covered foreign affairs and security. No, if I left out something? Okay, we have an additional question. It was my second question. Uh, Chairman Kim mentioned multi-party uh, negotiations. So does this mean that the end of war declaration would happen this year? And who will be sitting down for this discussion for the peace treaty? Well, peace treaty. The armistice agreement was uh, made in 1954, and the peace treaty was planned already back then that it, it should be made within six months from the time of armistice agreement. So with this peace treaty, uh, it will be the official end of war. However, what we did was the only the armistice agreement and this peace treaty uh, was pending for uh, several decades. So the peace treaty is related to denuclearization. So at the end phase of denuclearization, that will be when the peace treaty will be signed. And for this treaty, the signatories uh, that signed the armistice agreement will be uh, involved. So the peace treaty itself would uh, have, would be in the form of multilateral negotiations. And this is also necessary uh, to guarantee the peace uh, regime on the peninsula. The end of war declaration, this uh, is separate from the peace treaty. So this is a more of a political uh, declaration End of war declaration. Uh, according to this, this is a uh, that will be followed by a political declaration that we will uh, result. Uh, we will do away with uh, the hosti hostilities. Uh, so that was the initial plan that we had in mind, and that will be the phase that will be. Uh, taken. So I think we can move on to domestic economy area. Thank you very much. I'm Son Sonny from Asia Business. The Moon administration has focused on the job uh, administration, and but however, the employment situation is uh, very bad compared to former administrations. I believe that you are well aware of this. You had great commitment to jobs, but you are uh, going through difficulties, so therefore the public uh, distrust and credibility in uh, your policies are very low. So I believe I would like to ask you, what is your focus on job? Right now, the job indexes is very bad. And for us, uh, this is uh, very tragic at this moment. And because the job situation is very bad, uh, the government uh, cannot have explained this in other words, but 
Together with this, I believe that there have been um, some positive effects that have been witnessed. For instance, uh, the overall uh, household income increasing or the increasing in the number of permanent jobs and the increase of the people who are entitled to the uh, insurance or uh, those who are seeking for re-employment. So, uh, and in the new year, uh, in the current state, I believe that uh, the youth employment has uh, increased and it has been increasing for the sig most significant amount in a record. However, overall, jobs have not been increasing uh, and we have failed to live up to the expectations of the public. And we need to overcome the situation, uh, which is our task of uh, the administration. And a lot of the uh, controversies uh, lie in the uh, rapid increase of the minimum wage. I believe that uh, this has an effect uh, to a certain extent, especially to those micro business owners. However, fundamentally, what we need to also highlight is the long-term uh, long phenomenon, which is our flagship uh, manufacturing sectors that have been going through big slump and continued slump. And there, were ha there had been a restructuring of the manufacturing industries. So I believe that we had seen a rapid decrease of jobs uh, in this sector and uh, also the difficulties surrounding the manufacturing sectors as well as uh, the service industries that are related to the manufacturing sectors have been suffering. As for the minimum wage increase, uh, we have made uh, special acts and special measures to help the microbusiness owners and the self-employed. We need to bring new in, uh, innovation. And um, what I highlight is innovation, especially in uh, the manufacturing industry. We need to introduce smart uh, procedures, and we need to facilitate venture startups. So my administration will uh, exert full efforts to this end. Now, a uh, reporter from this side, maybe? The gentleman on, in the first row. Thank you. I am Song Chung Won from Daejeon Daily. Well, uh, from your opening remarks, you said the uh, growth uh, should uh, happen in the regions, and as you said it, you said uh, the local projects and the network, and as you pursue these two, what are the principles? or standards for these to unfold and any uh, things that you would like to emphasize in terms of regional projects, uh, we have 14 projects that are happening and you've been to 11 of them as far as I know. You've been to three out of 14. So do you have any order of visiting these local projects? And about the credit exemption that you mentioned, uh, are there any standards for this? About the regional economy, revitalizing the regional economy, I am uh, doing roadshows and tours, and uh, so far I've been to Jeonbuk and Gyeongbuk and Gyeongnam. And I will uh, visit all the other regions as well. I don't have any orders or uh, criteria for my visit. 
But the projects that were named as the local uh, revitalization uh, projects, these were all driven by the local government. So it's not the central government handing down the projects or the themes, but it's the local governments themselves that designate the projects, and we just do the feasibility study of these projects. So if the regional government and the, re uh, the people in the region uh, feels that it is uh, the time for their projects to uh, prosper, then that will be the time. And the exemption of feasibility study it depends on the uh, region's uh, public infrastructure conditions. So for metropolitan areas, in, uh, including Seoul, uh, it, this is uh, more easy. Uh, however, this is not the case uh, for the regional governments. That is why we exempt some of the feasibility studies for the regional projects. Uh, however, these criteria are very stringent because we do not want to give out all the exemptions of feasibility studies. So uh, in terms of metropolitan city governments, I think there is only one that uh, was exempted from, from the feasibility study. Uh, and especially uh, what is the uh, utmost imminent uh, projects that the region needs uh, is uh, would be the most important point that we should look at, and then the feasibility study will come. And over to this side. Good morning. I'm from Mail Nodong uh, newspaper. You mentioned the low, uh, the wage, minimum wage income, and uh, however, together with the uh, shortening working hours and the expansion of uh, more elastic uh, work hours, the working workers uh, have great concerns about the uh, policies put forth by your administration. So uh, the committees, the labor committees are discussing this uh, as a big agenda. And uh, we believe, and many believe, that uh, that your policies have been backtracked. What is your take on this. And in terms of uh, ILO uh, ratification, we are talking about the possibility. So do you have any plans to ratify uh, ILO uh, the, uh, by uh, June and to go to the organization in person uh, with this year to give a speech? Uh, secondly, you have asked the ILO agreement, the ratification of the agreement. We are talking about this in uh, our internal committee. And after the committee uh, talks about this, we will go into the process of legislation project, a process with the National Assembly. So the National Assembly is also preparing on its own. So as for the government, uh, the ratification of the ILO agreement, uh, we believe that it needs to be uh, carried out uh, in the near future. And when it comes to workers and the lives, uh, enhancement of the lives of the workers, it will help alleviate the uh, economic inequity with, uh, among our society. So I believe it's very important. As you know, my administration has increase the wage and shorten the working hours and have transformed and changed the irregular workers to regular workers. And we have exerted our full efforts in many areas. And I believe that compared to any previous administrations that we have been exerting uh, great achievements. And I believe that these achievements need to be praised to a certain a degree. However, increasing the life and the quality of the lives of the workers and um, reviving the Korean economy as a whole, uh, I believe that these two can go hand in hand. And increasing the wage of the workers itself is very positive, but it will have 
other effects on our economy. So if uh, the our economy is uh, bad, it becomes bad, then I believe uh, that uh, we cannot, it cannot lead to more jobs and it will eventually lead to the difficulties of the laborers. So I believe that we need to embrace uh, the conditions of uh, the workers and uh, comprehensively we need to be very uh, discreet in this area and in this aspect I believe and I sincerely hope that the laborers can open their minds and to welcome and embrace uh, our policies. And to this, uh, the second, the person in the second row. And the person with glasses. Thank you. I am uh, from Mail Daily, Park Yong-Gwang. You talked about and you're emphasizing a lot about inclusive society and an inclusive nation. And recently, uh, the reshuffle that you have done of your cabinet and uh, the, the one that we're expecting in the near future, in terms of the uh, economy, uh, do you have any plans to uh, assign people who have different uh, opinions uh, aside from yours or maybe people from other uh, parties? I'm not sure if I understood you correctly. But all in all, the uh, economic policy of the government, when we have the basis for it, the ministers, uh, related ministers, uh, should be the people who agree with the government's policy and its direction. If there are any uh, need for revision or amendments, of course, uh, these opinions should be expressed and it will be reflected. And it is the discussion that will take place uh, to supplement and to uh, make a better economic policy. So I think it is important that we work as a one team. So the economic policy of the government uh, made from discussions and debates and, and was agreed. But if we have people with uh, other uh, opinions, uh, this one team uh, policy would be hindered. And over to this side, to the back of the room. Well, Happy New Year to you, Mr. President. Uh, this year, I hope that you can make a nation where all people are, uh, can prosper together. Uh, listening to your uh, speech today, you th uh, said that you uh, will make a society where people can uh, succeed regardless of their socioeconomic backgrounds. However, the public um, public opinion or the public sentiment is very, um, very rigid right now. And uh, people are uh, suffering. They ha still have a sense of hope, but they have uncertainties about the future. Relating to this, you said that the administration is looking at this situation very uh, seriously. But you haven't changed uh, the basis of your policies. But what is the reason for this? And where does this confidence come from? And what are some of uh, the um, background? It was Kim Aegyeong from the Gyeonggi broadcast. Well, the government's uh, basis of economic basis policies, why they are uh, needed, and how it can help alleviate the wealth bipolarization, I said that to Unless we change the bipolarized wealth, we cannot uh, 
we cannot go through go to the sustainable uh, development. So uh, this has been highlighted in my speech. We will make uh, rooms. We have rooms for improvement, and we will improve what we need to. But I don't think that I have anything new to add to your question. And over to this side. Check, check, check On the very yeah. back, whoever is holding a notepad. <coughs> Good morning, Mr. President. Happy New Year. I'm from Herald uh, Economy, and I'm Yoon Hyung Jong. You have said that uh, you have mentioned the regulatory sandbox. And when I go across, uh, travel across a nation, uh, this act has passed the National Assembly general session last year. And uh, however, all uh, the CEOs and only part of the CEOs, maybe uh, seven out of 10, believe uh, that um, have a very low score in terms of when they grade the government's um, fourth industrial revolution policies. And if I ask them why, they answer that still there are too many regulations and the, the barrier of the regulation is too high. And the uh, existing regulations for the uh, traditional uh, industries, uh, they seem uh, as a cartel in the perspective of startups and uh, entrepreneurs. So, uh, what is your take on this? And how can uh, the startups really feel these changes and they feel encouraged that the government is providing great support for them in terms of fourth industrial revolution? What are your plans? Well, saying that it's uh, hard to enter into new businesses or pro uh, launch new technologies or products due to regulation, uh, I emphasize, uh, I feel uh, the same. However, for uh, innovative uh, regulations, my administration have exerted uh, our efforts and in this process, we have numerously highlighted and been aware of the fact uh, that a regulation innovation uh, is uh, in conflict with such um, perspectives. So when we have open roads and uh, when we have, we can have more convenience when it comes to um, regulation innovation, but the values that we would like to keep uh, becomes uh, withered. So there is this conflict among the uh, interested parties. So we cannot uh, easily decide or take sides with one aspect. And most representatively, you see the carpool incident and the social conflict that has arose due to uh, the carpool services. And we need to uh, understand that the government cannot make uh, easy decisions on these areas. Of course, we will uh, strongly persuade the interested parties but uh, there are uh, the interested parties who have conflicting views. So we believe that they also need to reach a compromise. And, uh, because, and to just to add on to my opinion to your question, uh, there are those who are opposite, who reject uh, to my um, innovations of regulations. And this value is uh, of the past. We are talking about the fourth industrial revolution, and we are experiencing a change in our economic scheme 
but we see that many people are still uh, trapped in the traditional sense of their values. So I believe that they themselves also need to be open-minded in accordance to the changes and the evolution of the era. So they need to communicate with others more free freely. And with deregulation uh, and the losses that are occurred with deregulation, deregulatory uh, systems and also the adverse effects, uh, we believe that we need to have appropriate uh, compensation. So we need to have this social compromise and this is uh, what we will put, for, put forth. Okay, let's turn to this side of the person who has a mobile phone in his hand. <laughs> Okay, you go first, and next will be you. Hello. Thank you very much for your efforts in making a uh, country where all prosper together. I am Chong Yeo from Asia. Uh, communication. The first visit you made this year was uh, to the startup site. And it is a, I think it shows that it's not only the startup itself, but the, the jobs that should be created by these new industries. But on the site, uh, the regulation itself uh, restricts the age of under 40, so people who want to make a startup uh, who are over 40 years of age um, are showing some regrets in this regard, and I am in constant communication with these people uh, on the ground. So the, this aspect is very important in your administration uh, to nurture the startup industry, and this is uh, very significant in terms of creating more jobs. So do you have any plans to expand uh, or uh, the age limit to over 40 so that we can uh, reinvigorate the startup booms? I think this is the voice of the people on the ground, so I would like to ask for your take on this. I completely agree with your point. The new ideas of the youth uh, and the startups from it is important, of course, How, uh, but also the people and the senior uh, age group and the uh, senior people who are creating startups, uh, utilizing their know-hows, I think it is important the government uh, supports these endeavors. So from this year onwards, the senior startups and especially the junior and senior uh, cooperation in terms of startups, we are going to support in earnest. Thank you very much for the chance. I am Kim do from Gyeongsan Daily. As uh, you said, the Korean uh, Peninsula peace process is uh, translates directly to economy. But the uh, Governors Association of Korea uh, has the voice that this, uh, the local communities are suffering from economic slowdown. So this denuclearization of uh, the Korean Peninsula and the inter-Korean uh, relations, how is this translated into the, especially the local uh, economies and revitalization of local communities? Where is Gyeongsan, Ilbo, Gyeongsan Daily located? It's in Busan. The economic cooperation between the two Koreas, there were criticisms and there are, were some misunderstandings that this is a giveaway to North Korea. But the Gaesong Industrial Complex uh, uh, took a, uh, we saw a lot of 
benefits and profits of the South Korean companies uh, more so than the labors that uh, were uh, given by the North Korean labors. So the Kaesong Industrial Complex uh, was beneficial uh, more so to the South Korean economy. And with the international sanctions, how this would take place, um, I, a lot of things will happen. And if the sanctions are relieved, uh, there will be a competition to uh, enter into North Korea to uh, take uh, the lead uh, in the lot of projects in North Korea. And in this regard, I, I think it is uh, uh, very important that South Korea does not lose this opportunity. The South Korean economy itself is uh, facing a structural problem, and we will not be able to experience the rapid growth that we have seen so far from now on. So we are facing a lot of difficulties in terms of economy, and the economic cooperation between the two Koreas will bring the new wind to revitalize the Korean economy and it is it is the new growth engine of the Korean economy and this is a unique opportunity that we only possess and I don't know when we can utilize this uh, opportunity, but this is uh, definitely a blessing of our economy. So when uh, this inter Korean economic cooperation happens in earnest. Uh, it's been too long ago since uh, we these inter-Korean relations were re uh, vitalized. However, uh, when we look back in the history, uh, when the inter-Korean relations were going well, the regional uh, governments were very active in uh, their uh, projects with North Korea, and they also have their – the exchanges were very uh, active, and I think even the uh, South Gyeongnam province, uh, they made a lot of profit with these exchanges as far as I know, and this was a new uh, – wind to this region, and it also helped the defense industry. And the Ulsan Metropolitan Government, if you visit the website of their uh, provincial government, uh, you will have more information about how they are preparing for the inter-Korean projects. At the moment, we uh, are facing the international sanctions, so there aren't anything that we can do at this very moment. However, when it's relieved, uh, we are going to make all the preparatory, preparatory measures uh, so that we will be able to start off uh, at the very moment when the sanctions are relieved. And if necessary, we are going to be uh, cooperate. We are going to be in talks with the uh, provincial governments in uh, advance. We will move to the next area due to time constraints. We have many uh, questions, but the daily papers have been not been appointed. Uh, can you give chances to them? So can you just raise your hands if you are a uh, member of uh, the daily newspapers? So let's start from uh, the front row. I'm from Chosan uh, Daily. As for the theme, we will go to politics, social, and culture, which is the last sector. But it's okay if you have any questions on other areas, you can uh, give questions on that area as well. Uh, for the inspector, uh, investigator uh, Kim Tae-woo or the former worker uh, Shin, uh, of the finance ministry Shin Jae-min, oh, of course we need verifications, but they say that and they raise questions uh, that uh, the government is going in the wrong direction as they think. 
uh, in the past, if you are, uh, if you were in the um, in the uh, opposition party, you would go up to them and try to uh, form an uh, attorney. However, the attitude that you have, uh, the, uh, the administration has, is uh, trying to look down on their characteristics, individual characteristics. So do you have any evaluations or opinions that you would like to share on these two figures? Uh, let's look at Inspector Kim tae uh, who was a member of the Social Investigation Unit, a special uh, investigation unit. So they're not interested in high officials, but they are only uh, interested in um, the people surrounding the president as well as the president himself. And also, next uh, would be the high-level uh, officials. So the unit is specialized in looking at the corruptions by these high-level officials, and especially those uh, who are surrounding the president. And uh, because when we look back in the history, the past two administrations have uh, been going through such uh, such issues of power abuse. So this is uh, the purpose of the special uh, investigation unit. And in this aspect, it's uh, fortunate to a certain extent that my administration does not repeat the mistakes uh, made by the former administrations to uh, put people down. So I believe that the special unit has uh, is carrying out its uh, very special role. But uh, Kim Tae-woo, the issue that he raises is uh, putting uh, into limelight the behaviors that he has done himself. Uh, all of the high-level officials uh, can abuse power. And this is something that has to be looked upon by the special unit. But investigator Kim Tae-woo, uh, the, the social issue is whether that this person has been uh, moved beyond the scope of his own public uh, realm. So when it comes to the former uh, official of the finance ministry, Shin Jae-min, I believe that uh, Kim dong yeon uh, the vice um, Minister of uh, the Minister of uh, Finance has been uh, responding in a very appropriate manner. I don't think that I need to repeat uh, the uh, answers. But uh, what I would like to say is that as for Shin Jae-min, he has made extreme. Uh, he had tried to and attempted to make extreme uh, uh, choices on his life, and has resulted in great uh, concerns by uh, his families and uh, the people surrounding him. And still at this moment, he is in a very uh, unstable uh, psychological uh, state. But uh, let me just give my uh, answer for the sake of uh, Shin Jae-min himself. As for a very young public worker, uh, he has had confidence in his own work, so I believe that this is very um, and needs to be uh, looked upon very uh, positively. And as for a young person and a young person, working level person, I believe uh, that it's important to open our ears to communicate with them. However, uh, the issue that Shin Jae-min has raised all comes down to the uh, the issues that have the, he has experienced himself, and he uh, the policy. However, the policy um, decisions are much more complex uh, than um, the the working, uh, the work and the job duties of a single uh, employer inside the ministry. And the final decision lies in the hands of uh, the minister. If uh, the 
decision making process is uh, lies in the hands of that person or the division that he is in. Uh, it can say that we have been enforcing power and there was a power abuse. But, however, in this case, the decision-making power is in the hands of the minister. So I believe it's very different. So I don't think that this is uh, wrong. And the ultimate decision lies in the hands of the president. The president has been picked by the public to make uh, the policies and to uh, decide on the policies himself. So in this aspect, I don't think that Shin Jae-min has a full understanding of this big picture. And what I would like to say to him is uh, that I hope for his well-being. And the issue that he has known uh, and he, that he has at mind, I hope that he does not think of it as uh, too big and because when we look at the big picture we need to look at the big picture and uh, his own opinions must be respected however uh, there are different ways to reveal his opinions and uh, I sincerely hope that uh, that he will not um, make people uh, uh, worried again. Well, I, uh, the foreign press uh, interested in domestic politics. If that is the case, uh, let's take a question from the foreign press. <laughs> I am from NHK Takano. Uh, the Korea-Japan relations is my question. Not only the social, uh, but also the uh, economic problem of these two countries' relations, the uh, relations between the two countries uh, is facing a dire situation. And based uh, what is your take on the agreement of the former uh, forced laborers and the judiciary's decision on this? Uh, uh, there aren't any official announcement from the Korean government in terms of this incident. And are there any possibilities that the Korean government will establish a new foundation? Uh, this question is regarding the Reconciliation and Healing Foundation. Let me take a, a touch upon the basics first. In the past, Korea and Japan, uh, we have a, an unfortunate history for the, uh, 35 years. We had a very tragic history, and due to this history, the diplomatic relations between the two countries as we set a new path. Uh, we did sign a new treaty, the basic treaty between the two countries. However, this uh, was this does not suffice and there uh, are these opinions uh, that linger to this day, this opinion, uh, this type of opinion is not something that was made by the government. It is uh, due to our past history. And I hope uh, and the Japanese government would have a uh, more humble uh, approach to this issue. And separate from this issue, I think we can sit together to muster our strengths and talk about the way forward. And this is my stance uh, from the very beginning, and it has not changed. So in this regard, uh, the leaders of Japan and the uh, politicians in Japan, uh, I believe they are trying to uh, they're trying to produce uh, more provocations and more um, uh, news in terms of this aspect, and I don't think this is uh, the right thing to do. 
The Supreme Court's decision, it is not only Korea, but the uh, countries around the world. Uh, the government should uh, respect the judiciary's decision. And this goes same for Japan. Of course, Japan could express their regrets in terms of the judiciary's uh, decision. However, our administration should respect the judiciary's decision. This is the same for the Japanese government. Of course, they could not be content about this decision. However, they should re uh, respect the decision. So with this decision, what is the way forward is the topic that we should talk about and to think about together. And regarding the basic treaty, and how the two countries uh, should resolve the uh, harm uh, and the trauma of the people who were hurt, uh, the victims who were hurt by the past history, uh, how we should move forward is the uh, aspect that we should be talking about, about the new foundation uh, I understand that the investigation even is taking place in terms of this incident, so I think we should uh, wait and see how it unfolds, and then that is uh, when we can talk about the new foundation, if that is possible. Mr. President, uh, we are running out of time. Actually, we uh, went over uh, the scheduled time, so this would be the last question. Uh, oh, sorry. Yes, no. Uh, Last year, for Korean females, it has been an year for them to raise their voices. Mr. President, you have... Did you hear these voices? South Korea is one of the largest in the developed world. Women here are make up only 2% of your boardrooms. Last year, the world watched while women took to the streets of South Korea. What practical measures as president will you take to make sure that they feel safe and also that women here can fulfill their potential? Thank you. Now you have pointed to a very important issue. Uh, it's uh, something that we need to admit. Therefore, uh, with my administration, the figure, uh, the female uh, needs to enter into uh, the high officials, high official uh, status. So we would like to break the glass ceiling that they are uh, facing. And through these efforts, last year the female employment rate has increased. And together with this, we have been giving great support for them to, to uh, manage and balance between work and life. So, for instance, uh, the uh, maternity leave. So, uh, I believe that they there were uh, made great progress in these aspects, and in the going uh, in the near future, we will also uh, try to alleviate the gap between uh, the gender uh, discrepancies. And we will ensure that uh, all uh, genders are 
uh, enjoyed and are uh, respected equally so that they can participate in social and economic uh, arenas. Maybe one last question, or two last questions from uh, the from the two people here. I'm from News One. Mr. President, every year you look at the approval ratings, but what I would like to say is that especially those, uh, the men in the 20s and uh, the uh, the women in their 20s, the gap is very big. So maybe uh, you could be not very uh, satisfied with uh, these uh, approval ratings, but can you take this opportunity to address uh, the people, the men who are in the 20, uh, who are in their 20s? And the next person, I'm from CBS. Uh, we, I will ask about the domestic politics. Right after your inauguration, you went to hiking with the journalists, and I remember that you have said that the power and the relation between power and the press needs to be a very healthy tension. Uh, the press, I believe that your intention was that the press needs to have a check and balance on the government. Uh, however, recently, you had a press conference on uh, the assigning of the reshuffle of your uh, aides, but as for a journalist, uh, there are criticisms that a jur resigned journalist is in the center of your uh, political aides, and maybe this uh, goes against your principle. If this uh, continues, there are many concerns that this may deteriorate the level of the press. What is your take on this? And one very last question. Thank you very much. I'm from Money Today. I'm Kim Sung Hee. Before we started, uh, we heard these songs uh, as the background music, and I hope that uh, the lyrics of the songs would really happen in the, this new year. We have a new uh, figure here, uh, Noo Young-min, the uh, new uh, presidential top aide. Uh, and do you have any missions for him? And there is also the Gwangju Taylor jobs uh, that is also suffering. Why isn't uh, we? Why isn't it making great progress? And what is your solution to this problem? Uh, it will take more than ten minutes to answer all these questions. Well, about the approval ratings. Uh, um, especially the discrepancies between the young female and males and uh, the discrepancy that results from this uh, conflict between the two genders. I understand uh, that we do have such conflicts. This is not something special. It is inevitably uh, generated uh, when the society is changing. The minorities issue, the refugees issue, it's, uh, it has been with us, and it is inevitable in such a transformative um, phase of the society. So we will, we will overcome these issues. Uh, and I don't think the approval ratings uh, is directly related to this. Uh, but if the ratings are low, uh, this is a serious problem uh, that we are not uh, living up to the expectations of the people. The males in the 20s, uh, if their ratings are low, I think this is uh, this shows the perspective of how they see uh, the government giving more hope to them. So uh, we will put our endeavors to communicate more uh, and well. In terms of the media and the incumbent reporters who uh, are appointed as presidential aides, uh, the criticisms 
I uh, accept these criticisms. However, uh, I would like to mention one thing. The media and the people who lived up to their call uh, uh, as a fair um, journalist, I think it is their uh, sense of uh, public and sense of duty that drove them to that position. So that sentiment that they have could be translated directly to their duty uh, fulfilling as the presidential aid and not compromising to injustice. And this is something that we should look at in a positive way. From Chengwada's perspective, it's uh, uh, important for us to have new voices in the in the office, and we have a continuous feed of criticisms from outer world. So that is one aspect that we uh, considered. And on the other hand, uh, in the past, of course, not all media, but it was only partial media. But uh, there were some misdeeds uh, and, uh, regarding the government and media relations. So uh, the, uh, colluding of these two areas um, did happen in the former days, and uh, this uh, was something that I criticized in, uh, back in those days. But th those type of uh, ill-minded alliances uh, are not happening at all in my, in my administration. And it is to relive and really to uphold the, the spirit of uh, healthy criticism of the presidential office uh, that led to the appointment of these people. Not everyone could be happy with my appointment, but my uh, choice, uh, my, in my opinion, is that we would like to uh, introduce new talents to the Blue House and um, who are capable and to, uh, and I believe that my choice is uh, has more um, benefits than drawbacks. As for uh, the uh, appointment of the chief of staff, Lu Yangmin, uh, there are some assessment by the press uh, that I have looked upon the practicality, but I am very unfortunate to listen to such news because in uh, in the uh, Changwade, uh, there are no workers who are uh, not um, not abiding by the practicality, but uh, I believe that the former uh, chief of staff, Im jong Suk may be not very happy to hear such opinions, but he is a three-term uh, lawmaker, and together with former lawmaker Kang ki jung and he did not uh, run for the general election, and he uh, has strong intentions that he will dedicate only for the Moon administration. So uh, this is my background of uh, my recent appointment of the new aides. So uh, the senior political um, affairs secretary as well. So through him, we would like to communicate more uh, vigorously with the opposition party. Nu Yang Min has also been serving as the committee uh, for industrial uh, aspects, so he can have great uh, communication and exchanges with the industrial sectors. And there are many strengths that he can uh, put forth in the future. As for the Gwangju tailored jobs, you may all know the uh, intentions of it, so I will not recap uh, the intentions. For instance, uh, Hyundai Motors, for uh, instance, do you think, do you know uh, when it established new assembly line in Korea? It's probably long uh, date back, 
And since then, uh, it has established factories outside of Korea. And it did not have an assembly line inside Korea. So our automobile industry is uh, going through difficulties right now. Uh, the industry itself will exert its own efforts, but as I mentioned in the uh, address, uh, the vehicles, future-oriented vehicles, including electric and hydrogen vehicles, we aim to increase uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the number of these vehicles, and this will be one of the measures to uh, revitalize uh, the automobile industry. If we do succeed in this aspect, we can move uh, the and make a new assembly line here in Korea. And to this end, I believe that there needs to be more active communication and agreement reached between the company and the labor unions. I ask for them to gather their wisdom. And if this is done, we will spare no efforts. And this will complete my uh, New Year's press conference. Thank you for your attention for a long period of time. Well, it's uh, the first time uh, doing this in this format. Uh, I don't know if it went well, but um, I hope that it was a session to help you alleviate some of your uh, questions. And Happy New Year to you all. And one last thing that you should all remember, or we all should remember, is that, as I mentioned before, the relation between the government and the media, the, they stand in different realm, but they are striving to make a better Korea, uh, a Korea that is more just and fair, and a nation where all people prosper together where uh, through uh, innovative and inclusive growth. So we all go in the same direction. So we are a team in making a better Korea. Thank you very much. Thank you. That concludes the 2019 New Year press conference. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, that's where we're going to leave it for now. We have been watching President Moon Jae-in's third New Year's press conference from the top office. Fine work, as always, from our translators. If you missed it, we're going to have a breakdown, the highlights, if you like, of the speech that went before the press conference and also the press conference in our next newscast, slightly delayed, coming up in about 10 minutes with our very own E.G. Yoon. So until then, thank you, as always, for watching. And until next time, goodbye.